What up? What up? What up, everybody? Thank you for coming to the About That Water podcast show, where we help you build strong financial habits. And today, I will be talking about the six stages of career planning and advancement, because that is one of the things that, you know, for all of us that we are trying to get out of. And actually just trying to advance our careers because our lives are so dynamic. But till then, let's go on and get this uh, 30 seconds so I can get everything going. And also I'll play my intro and we'll be right up in here. See you soon. Welcome back. Welcome back. Play my. Oh, I think this is it. You're listening to the About That Wallet podcast. We'll be right back after these messages. Even the best and the brightest this world has to offer have coaches and mentors. Build strong money making behaviors by applying financial concepts and strategies with Anthony Weaver on the About That Wallet Show. It's time to get off the bench and get in the game. Now, here's your host, Anthony Weaver. Hey, hey, hey. So, I mean, we had a wild ride today. It's pretty much a day where something went wrong. It went wrong for me today. Um, I have to say, like, getting pulled over. For those of you who know, like, you know, just getting pulled over for, like, tags, making sure that all my stuff is right. It's just really weird. Um, but also, it's like I haven't been pulled over in so long. It's just odd to get pulled over. So I really don't know what to say sometimes. And, you know, I'm just there listening and saying, like, uh, yeah, sorry, officer. Don't know what you need, but it happens. Um, but on top of that, one of the things that I came across and started thinking about career choices and why do people choose the careers that they do? Is it because of the lifestyles that they have or they choose them because they don't know any better because they have to, because their parents are doing it or their parents told them to do it, their return on investment. Like, what are those things that are causing people to choose the jobs or careers that they want to have? And then I started thinking, well, even if they have it just because they got to do what they got to do because they have to do it just to take care of the things that they want to do, how do they advance in their careers or even shift and change their careers? And that's what I want to talk about today. And those six things that I'm going to talk about is number one, which is assess and research personal goals, abilities, and career fields. Number two, evaluate in the employment market and identify specific employment opportunities. Number three, develop a resume and cover letter. Uh, apply for available positions. Number four, which is the interview for available positions, assess your interview performance. Number five, which is the evaluate financial and other factors of positions you are offered. And number six, which is plan and implement a program for career development. So I gave you the six right up front because just in case, if you want to stick around and learn a little bit more about it, but it gets you to think of, all right, why in the world are you doing what you're doing and what you like to do and why not do what you want to do? But also before we dive into all that fun stuff, I have to say first off that I've been doing a lot of things scared and One of the things that I'm trying to do for me personally is to become a public speaker. In order for me to become a 
public speaker, I had to first speak in public, but also get comfortable in my message and what I want to say and how do I want to convey it so that I can provide value to everybody else uh, who are listening. And having that understanding that life is, is so much available for you, you just have to ask for it. And how do you ask for it really determines on how you get into the room. And one of the things that I've been doing to try to become a better speaker is to try to take on as many opportunities that I can to build my repertoire, build that confidence, build up my my log of different talks that I've done before so that I can continue to add value. And one of the things that I've listened to, they say it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. And how do you actually show up to the uh, platform and show up for the people? And one of the things that I feel bad all the time is that I had to say that I do apologize to you all because I have not released my episodes for my backlog. It's one of the things I've been working on it day in and day out, trying to get everything together nice and tight. So when I go to release these episodes, you're going to be able to pretty much just do a deep dive into everything. And I mean, when I say everything, I mean in this going from how to deal with student loans, going through your taxes, dealing with prenups, dealing with uh, divorce or breakups, how to deal with crypto. Um, we also talking about how to deal if you're in the military, how to actually advance yourself in the military realm. And these are the things that I want to release out. But I just have so much time. And hopefully you guys are being patient with me. I do appreciate it. And that's one of the reasons why I want to continue to do these live shows to kind of give more and give back. Uh, because I do have a talk that I already recorded because I've been doing so many things in the background. It's crazy. Um, just trying to get things together as far as like, you know, getting the podcast together. Not just this podcast, but I'm also looking at different platforms to host on. I'm trying to, uh, not trying to, but I'm researching uh, other talks that are coming up later in the year and just finishing paying my taxes. So it's just like so much is going on over and over again. Um, and it just, I just need time to relax, to calm my mind, take a break. And I know you guys haven't seen me as active uh, online. It's just because I'm trying to deal with real life and I'm, human is like the rest of you all. And I have things that's going on in my life. And I understand that, you know, getting these, these episodes out there for you all is very important. It's important to me because this is why I started the show, but also I don't want to leave you high and dry on what I am doing, but also I want to continue to add value as live and as grimy as I can. Cause as they say, done is better than perfect. However, if you want to advance, you have to do it right. Um, you have to, you can do it dirty, but you have to do it better than the rest. And in order for you to do it better than the rest, you need to continue to build on that. And I think I've been in this game too long to just kind of throw something out there. And I want to make sure I show up, not just for you, but also for my clients, not the clients. Yeah. Yeah. My clients. And also I want to show up for, uh, the audience. And that's one of the things I like about it. What's going on, Sierra? Syria. I, I got to get your name right one of these days. Um, I know I had it right before, but you haven't showed up in a while. So I just want to want to give you your props here. I'm going to give you some mad ones for coming through. Because you're always showing up. I, I love this, especially on the Facebook <laughs> side. That's just for you. Just for you. Um. Oh, and by the way, since I got you guys here. One of the things that I do want to share is that I will be going live next week with a um, with a guy who his name is Derek, and he is a cyber warrior. When I say a cyber warrior, meaning like he he's more of an ethical hacker, talk about cybersecurity all the time. He has his full YouTube channel. But the reason why I want to bring him on because I want to help you secure your digital wallet. Because, I mean, even though your wallet is all in, is in your pocket right now, but a lot of the things that you have in your wallet, 
are all have a digital trace, like your uh, your ID, your driver's license, your credit card. Um, some people even have their insurance cards. All this stuff has a digital trace. And I just wanted to talk to somebody who is in that space that could provide some expertise on how to protect your uh, yourself because it's a lot of identity theft out there. You know, I just want to make sure that you guys are okay and make sure that I'm okay as well because I need to learn this stuff too. Uh, all right. So what are we talking about today? Um, before we get into that, I'm going to just play my little, uh, do I have like little break music? I don't. However, um, you know what? I'm going to do this. How am I going to do this? I have a little quiz that I want to do. I wonder if this shows up. Yes, I have a little quiz that I want to share with everybody. And we come back and then I'll show you the answer. Hold tight. <laughs> Or England, which one was it? Which so for those of you who are listening to the audio only, the question was which country? was the first one to use paper money. Was it ancient Rome, China, or England? All right, let's see what you guys got. Let's see, we got somebody that says China. All right. Shara, okay. Hopefully I said that right this time. Shara says China. Let's see what the answer is. Oh, good job. You got that one right. Congrats. Sir. So if you guys want to participate in any of these uh like little trivia things, I know it's just fun, but I like to throw some money things out there. Uh come on over to YouTube and we can kind of play some of these and uh get these going. I, I like these little quizzes, you know what I'm saying? Just something spice up the mood a little bit. Try something new. Cause you know the show is for you. And I want to try to cram as much information as I can every episode. So ultimately, why are you here? I could talk about the news and all that fun stuff, but right now the news doesn't matter. Excuse me. The news matters is that so many people are either A, hacking these big companies, and there's a lot of layoffs that are happening. And I feel as though... We all have the issue with our current careers. For those of us who currently have jobs, we want to maintain those jobs. And so when it comes to career uh, planning and development, one of the things that should be an ongoing process is career planning. Um, It isn't a one-time thing that you do for graduation. It's about continuously evaluating yourself and your goals throughout your work and life. So that means that if you're dealing with your career right now, you need to make sure that you're looking for the projection. Like, is this current job that I'm doing now is going to take me to where I want to be? But by before you do that, you need to start thinking about self-reflection. Self-reflection is key. I will repeat that. Self-reflection is key. You need to understand your strengths, your interests, and values to pick a fulfilling career path. I understand that your career doesn't have to be your life. You don't have to be happy in your job. Your job is there to provide a means to an end. So think about it. Your job is your current thing that you're doing. Your career is what you're doing over a lifetime. So sometimes they might say, you know, I'll talk about the guy, Derek, that I'm having on next week, live show uh, on the 25th at eight. I believe the next week's the 25th. Uh, Let's see. Seven days from now. Yeah, 25th. So 25th at 8 p.m. 
I'll be talking to Derek. And this is one of the things that we're going to be talking about is a career. So your career could be in IT, but your current job right now could be help desk. And then your next progression could be, you know, uh, system admin tier two, or you can go up to tier three, which is where you're looking into like network security, uh, intrusion detection systems and so forth. But the overarching career is in IT, okay? Or in education, if you're an educator, right now you might be a teacher but as your current job, but your career is teaching. So your next step up from being a teacher, you can become an assistant principal or somewhere in the admin staff uh, or even work for the district. And then from that on, you can become a principal with another degree, all that stuff that comes into play. But these are the common struggles that we all have. And one of the things I always think to myself is, well, am I on the right path? But in order for us to figure that out, we have to ask ourselves, well, wh where do we want to go? What, what direction do we want to take ourselves? And many people just don't know what kind of work that they want to do or even how to get there. But not only that, you start thinking to yourself like, hmm, well, what skills do I need? And then where do I find these jobs? So the job market is constantly changing, as we all know, from it used to be very hands on, you used to be able to just have one job and take care of your bills and then even provide for your children if you have children or your spouse or somebody. You know, what what are the things out there that you feel as though is a skill gap for your current life? Um, I know, Sierra, you're Sierra. I'm going to get this right one of these days. Sierra. OK, Sierra. If for any reason, I'm only I'm going to talk to you because you're the only one that's like commenting here today. What is your career that you want to get into or you're currently in? And then think about the skills gap that's going to take you to that next level. You're going to be my avatar today, okay, Sierra? Uh, so since I'm talking to Sierra, you know, virtually, and those of you who wants to join this conversation can join on YouTube, The we need to figure out the direction that you want to go in. And then we start thinking about the skills gap, right? So do we need to take more online classes? For those of you who just lost your job, not saying Sierra, you lost your job, but for some of you who feel as though their jobs were replaced, say with California, where they recently started implementing the wage gap, um, the price increase to $20 an hour, some of those restaurants have went all digital. So there's no cashier and there is nobody taking your order or anything like that. You have to go up to the digital machines. There are some stores in California where there is no staff. It's all digital. You go in punching your thing. It's pretty much a big vending machine. And you coming out there looking great. You got what you need. You ain't talk to nobody. That's it. I have to feel as though this generation, as we go forward, are becoming more antisocial mostly because of the things that we are interacting with. Nobody wants to get on the phone anymore to make a phone call. It's all text message now. People are afraid to even go order pizza. They rather type in their phone to go to Uber Eats or something like that. And Uber Eats, if you're listening, um, I'm looking for a sponsor for the show. So let me know. Uh, and then you also have other things for like hotels. You don't want to talk to somebody. You'd rather just go online and book online. Airlines, the same way. You used to be able to forcefully go up to the cashier and say like, hey, I want to go to a flight somewhere today. <laughs> and they will just go down to print you out a ticket and kind of find out it actually is a lot cheaper to do it that way. <clears throat> if you want to save some money. For those of you who are looking for saving money on some airline tickets, you can actually just go up to the cashier, get your ticket. Um, and then let's see, we also have how to find the right fit. You know, you already have your skills out there. You're doing everything else. 
And sometimes you feel stuck in jobs that, you know, your talents doesn't align with your values. Like you can be an awesome cook, but the manager just don't see it in me having you as a sous chef. But yet, you know, you can handle that broiler. You can whip up a mean steak, a mean lobster tail, throw on some, uh, some lemon zest and some of them juices like they do on a lobster, on a red lobster commercial. But, you know, it just doesn't align well. Or say if, um, because everything's becoming very political of, as of late, say if your manager or the general manager decides to say, like, you know what, hey, I'm pro-Palestine or I'm pro-Israel. And because it just doesn't align with your feelings and your values, you decide to leave. Now, do you separate? yourself because of that or do you continue to work because it pays the bills for now until you try to figure out to the next level so sometimes we got to bite our tongue if you have the debt and you have everything else because you weren't saving like you're supposed to and a lot of people just have the jobs because you just don't have the money to move around you know all right so you say you're in sales um i like to revamp communication skills see So wrapping up your communication skills, one of the things is you got to communicate. But also when it comes to communication, there's multiple ways to communicate. Visually, tactile, uh, audibly. I think those are most ways you can communicate nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. So we send a letter, we write it. So we visually, we've got to see it. Uh, And all that fun stuff. So it depends on what type of communication you want to do. Are you doing IT communications where you actually got to run some cables? Uh, So it really depends on your career path. But when it comes to sales, hey, everybody got to sell something. And to sell, you need to make sure you use the right words to get the right people to purchase the thing that you have to offer. Now, how do you do that? You have an A could take sales courses, you can buy them. Some people actually sell these things. Look at, go to the thrift store and get books and so forth. But we have those different opportunities to get into sales. Now, as they always say, you can watch movies even, where they always say like, hey, can you sell me this pen? And that is one of the things that I love about that movie. I think it is from The Wolf of Wall Street. Some of you guys let me know. What's going on, BP on IG? Saying hi to the IG folks. Thank you guys for coming through, staying on. So in the Black Math Academy, shout out to y'all. So one of the things about um, upping your skills. So let's go on and go back to this wheel, which is number one, which is the assess the research, personal goals and abilities and career fields. So we talked about that which is one of the issues that a lot of people have is that they lack the direction. This is where you start honing into the direction of where you want to go. You start looking into what are the different fields. So I'm going to read from you a few things. So, you know, Sierra, you said sales right here. They say sales and retailing, web promotion producers, marketing representatives, and sales managers with technical knowledge in these areas of electronics Uh, medical products, and financial services. So these are one of the things that we can look into from technology because technology is one of the things that are driving a lot of these businesses. How are you utilizing technology in your current career field? I want you to think about that. For those of you who are listening to this uh, pre-recording, well, obviously those of you who are listening live, I want you to think about that too. So, um, Think about it. If you're in healthcare, you have medical assistants, physical therapists, home health workers, biotech analysis, uh, laboratory technicians, registered nurses, and healthcare administrators. So these are also different jobs on how you utilize in technology. And obviously, I can't in this section without talking about the financial services, which is risk assessment managers. 
you have actuaries. For those of you who don't know what actuaries are, I think Ben Stiller was an actuary in one of these movies. I cannot recall what it was. But what they do is actually just take a bunch of numbers, crunch it together, and just kind of come up with an idea of what's going to happen. So they think about them like uh, statisticians where they actually look like stats all day and just like look at numbers. Then you have e-commerce accountants, investment brokers, and others with the knowledge of accounting and taxes. <laughs> we just finished taxes. and It's a lot of work. So <clears throat> obviously we had to use that to help out, help us out with that. Um, so now you're thinking to yourself, we found out where we want to go, but how do you build that? Um, how do you build up your skills? One of the ways that I, this is one of the ways that I utilize my, well, let me just tell you first. One of the ways to actually uh, build up your skills is to actually make up work in your job. So say if your supervisor or your manager is uh, looking for something, like you had an open conversation, you already know what they're looking for. You'd be like, hmm. I'm going to go down and take on that task for you. Um, and it, I'll just do this on the side. Do like 20% of your, your work day, which is usually, say, eight hours, 20%. You're looking at about, what, 16 minutes? So 16 minutes, maybe up to a half hour a day. Just kind of look or work on this particular project, and you can actually help build up your skills. So say if you want to build up uh, Sierra, because you mentioned it uh in the chat, nobody else mentioned this on Instagram on what their career fields were. One of the things that you can do if you want to help out with your communication skills is first find a way that you can actually expand on that from your day to day. Talk to your manager, be like, hey, I know you have a briefing coming up or something like that. And like, hey, I just want to do this brief for you. Uh, can you give me a chance? Or Say like, hey, I want to help out pitch your next product. Um, I want to take these classes to kind of help, you know, facilitate the job. Now, the thing about it, you're not looking for a raise at this point. You're looking to up your skills because when you up your skills, you up your value. And not all value is created equal. So that even if they were to let you go tomorrow or even next week, you already got those skills because nobody can take that away from you. So you can either do volunteer work even on your free time. You can do internships. Not all internships are free, but for the most part, you're volunteering. Uh, you can do, um, they say on here campus projects, but this book is mostly for those who are on campus and stuff like that. But you can actually do this in your neighborhood um, and try that out. So, we talked about the things on how you can actually look to build your skill set for free by letting your employer pay for your skills. And this is one of those hacks that you got to do is learn how to leverage your job. And this is the best way to do it. All right. So we got one. Let's see. The Black Math Academy says intriguing point about all value being created equally. Hmm. No, no, no. I said all value is not created equally because though you might be able to add value to that one manager, but the next manager that you get might not like it. The manager above them might not like it or might e not even see the value in it because they think it's pointless. Like what's, what's the point? So I want you to kind of think about that is how, your value can be uh, the broader scope. Oh, no worries. This is um, no worries. Black Math Academy. Can you put your name in the chat so I don't keep calling you the Black Math Academy? I think we got it here on the recording. Um, but one of the things is that we want to make sure is that when we add value, we're adding value to the right spaces. And to do that, you need to do your research. And by doing that research, I'm meaning you need to talk to the people. You need to see what are their pain points are. What are the things that they look into improve or 10x? Because sometimes it might not be a pain point. It's just something that they want to take to that next level. 
they want to get rid of something so they can add something or they want to leverage something else that they already have. They just don't know how to. So you need to figure out what it is that you need to to deal with. Oh, thank you, O'Neill. Got it. Okay. Now, when it comes to, we got that out the way, right? So we got out our strategies on how to build up on our skill sets. Now we need to start thinking about how do we leverage our net worth? Let me see if I don't want to skip out on things. Okay. So we're going to look into identifying job opportunities. So in order for us to look at job opportunities, we already know where we want to go at. We upped our skills. Looking at job opportunities. So the reason why we want to look at job opportunities is because we need to know what skills that we need to up. You know, we could just sit there and say like, okay, we found these opportunities, but will they work? Will they work? But the way how to tell if they're going to work and add value, this is where we're going at, O'Neill, I got you, is we have to sit around and look at what people are asking for right now. Are they asking for, um, in Sierra, for your case, for communication, what other jobs are looking for in a communicator? Are they looking for somebody who can speak well, who have great writing uh, skills, or do they have good management skills, people skills, and EG or EQ skills, which is like you're, you're good with uh, emotional value. Your soft skills are good. Not so much your, your hard skills. Hard skills are easy. They help you get the job. Hard skills, remember this for everybody. Hard skills help you get the job. Soft skills help you keep the job. I'll say that one more time. Hard skills help you get the job. Soft skills help you keep the job. And what I mean by that is that just because you can sell me a product, but you don't care about your customers, you don't care about your coworkers, you're not, not that you don't care, it's just that it doesn't seem genuine, you're not your true self, you're not have that sympathy or empathy, and so forth. Uh, let's see. Siri said, I believe in sales. Uh, your boss always wants you to be informative. Okay. By being informative, which means that you need to know the product. And by doing, knowing the product, you need to be doing your homework. Even when you're not on the clock. Which means that you're doing research about the product, how people are utilizing that product. How are people not using that product? Are people using that product incorrectly? Uh, also, what are the health benefits? Are there multiple uses for that product? Kind of wish I had. I used to have Dr. Bronner's soap laying around. So some of you might know who Dr. Bronner is. I don't know who he is. But if you ever get a bottle of Dr. Bronner's, that thing sells itself. On that product, it tells you, I think it's at least 16 different ways or uses for that product. And because it provides so many different uses, in a time of need, like right now, when things are not going well in the economy, why not get yourself some Dr. Bronner soap? Or again, I think it is Dr. Bronner. Somebody correct me on that type of soap brand. But what it, what they do, they actually teach you how to utilize it to do sanitize your countertops. They say how to deodorize your, your trash cans. You can use it for your soap dispenser. You can use it to wash your hair. You can use it to wash your hands. Uh, think to what else to tell to how wash your clothes. Like there's so many different uses that you can have for this one product. And because they do it that way, it's like a no brainer on why you should not have this product. And I think everybody should have that product in their houses because that's how simple it is. And I'm trying to look for my other products. So I have a product that I'm actually one of the companies that I usually sponsor with it's earth breeze. Cause it's, um, 
what's the name? There is Earth Day coming up this Monday on the 22nd. And the reason why I like Earth Breeze is because they give you, again, multiple use product. The product that I'm holding right now is about their dishwasher tablets. But I also utilize their um, their laundry sheets because, one, I have multiple uses for them. One is that they're easy to travel with. So I could travel them to the different conferences that I go to so I could wash my clothes there. I wash them here and they do great with my blacks and colors clothes. They don't blend or anything like that. And then also the packaging, because when I do my flower beds, when it's, I think this is the year I need to redo them. I utilize the cardboard that these packages are set up in so that they are also biodegradable. And so it's good for the earth, less water to come around. And then I can travel with the product. Now, if you actually want to get your own, you can go to aboutthatwallet.com forward slash earth breeze to get your own. And it's earth, B-R-E-E-Z-E. And you can get it yourself. Okay, so let's see. I enjoy travel. Thank you for coming through. So, yeah, I was right with Dr. Bronner. Okay. All right. So we got O'Neill on Instagram. He says the movie old the m night uh was it Charlemagne movie has a man on there that works as an actuary he mentioned some of his work okay thank you o'neill for for pointing that out for me because i was talking about actuaries earlier for those of you who are just joining all right so now that we got the understanding of how do we actually going to add value and where to find these jobs now we have to start looking at, you know, some of these other job search methods. Obviously, you know, you can use LinkedIn. You can use your network. I utilize my network heavy. Um, you can utilize social media. If you're looking for a job right now, just go turn on your camera and say like, hey, I'm looking for a job in this area doing this particular thing. Because you already know what your career is. You know what career field you're doing. You're just trying to find a job. And if you just need that and how many followers you have, even if you just have 50 followers, you just need like two or three people because you'd be surprised that people that aren't as close to you, but they want to see you win. And it's sad that the people that are not really close to you want to see you win more than the ones who are close to you. It's interesting how that works. But, you know, not talking from personal experience or anything, just saying. Um, just statistically, I've seen people just around just want to see you win. Um, all right, so we got that out there. We tried a different search methods. Obviously, you can go online, go to their website. Some of the social media um, platforms, I know on Instagram, I've seen several job offers on there, like the companies or the owners will even say like, hey, we're looking for this person. Apply here today. We take an interview so on the spot. We can hire you immediately. So they do have those options out there. All right. Now that you found out what you want to do, you need to apply for the job. Now, applying for the job, you need your resume. Some of you are already are familiar with the resume. For those of you who don't know, a resume is a summary of education, training, experience, and qualifications provides uh, prospective employees with an overview of your potential contributions to an organization. That's the definition of a resume. Now, we already talked about adding value, and not all value is created equal. So when you go to look for these jobs, based on the job requirements, you can already talk about the, we already know that we're leveraging our current job to get that next job by creating our own work. And what I mean by creating your own work, you're adding value to your current employer on something that's not even in your job description. You need to up your skills, change that gap in knowledge. I'm gonna tell you this, when I was in the help desk, I was in IT, fresh getting out of school. Um, No, yes, I wasn't fresh. Yeah, I was fresh, out of school, just had my undergrad degree. And I was working at 
You know, I wonder if that helped us. I was working at Geek Squad. You know, people with the white shirt, the the black tie used to have the pin. And trust me, all of my photos that I look back on, I just have on my white tee, me and my white button down, because I used to take the tie off, cut the black pants. I was always in business casual. So they will let me in in all the clubs. So I was like everywhere. Um, so I did that. But in order for me to up my skills, what I had to do was, A, learn Linux. So I started learning Linux on my own. And then I was like talking to customers. we like, hey, are you guys hiring anywhere else? Um, is your job hiring? Where could I go to apply for the, where you work at? And so some people would give me some ideas of what to do. And what I wound up doing was applying to a company, to a headhunter company, because I heard somebody else talk about it. So I applied for it. Wound up getting a job at the headhunting company. They hired me on as a help desk person. But because I already had that Linux experience, already had that customer service experience, I was able to slide into the job nice and easy. But this is where I started utilizing my um, my soft skills, which is getting to know the people, getting to know the business, getting to know behind the scenes of what is actually going on. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And starting learning that business. So this goes to this next segment, which is the financial and legal aspects of employment. And that's accepting that position. So that work environment, you need to investigate the work environment. The term corporate culture refers to management styles, work intensity, dress codes, and social interactions with an organization. So when sometimes sometimes you feel like, oh, that's not a good fit for me, that's not this and not that, they are talking about how you actually interact with that manager. Now, sometimes that manager can make or break that job. And I swear, usually a lot of people will leave the job because of their managers. I'm not sure how many of you actually left your prior job because of management. Just, just let me know in the comments. That's great. Okay. So while you guys are doing that, let's see what uh, O'Neill says. O'Neill on Instagram says, learn the cogs, the gears, the nuts, the bolts, the washers, the screws, to the bit. <laughs> it's like, I mean, how far are you going? You want to learn to manufacture the nuts and bolts, too? Uh, that is something to think about because this is one of the things when it comes to business, if you want to run your own business, you need to understand how are they running the current business that you're getting paid to do right now. And if, even if you feel like doing it or not. All right. So Neil said he, he left his prior job because of management. I want to know if you left yours. And for those of you who are listening to this, you can actually leave a note on Spotify. Just go on and type in the bottom of if you left your job because of your management. Now, we already talked about, we can talk about the benefits of it. That's a whole nother episode, but I want to do want to highlight this. There are two things when it comes to your, your benefits that you want to compare on. You want to look at the market value, which are the calculations determine the specific monetary value of employee benefits, the cost of benefits, if you had to pay for them, for example, you may view the value of one week's vacation as one out of 20, uh, one out of 52. That's 52 weeks in a year for those of you who are keeping up of your annual salary, or you may view the value of your life insurance benefit as what it would cost you to obtain the same coverage. Now, some contractors out there will allow you to actually uh, opt out of their health insurance and they will pay you about $10,000 so that you don't have to get their health insurance. You can go get your own. So if you're not familiar about that, you need to ask these questions, um, if, especially if they don't have it on their website. But some of the jobs will tell you about their health insurance plans. And if you decide to opt out, ask them what that price is. and Do you get compensated for opting out of that program? Now you also got to look into, this is the second value you need to look into your job, which is the future value, which calc um, the future value calculations 
uh, enable you to assess the long-term value, I mean, the long-term worth of employee benefits, such as pension programs and retirement plans. For example, you can compare the future value of payment contributions to a company retirement fund to that of other saving and investment options. Now, some of these jobs do allow you to either do a cash buyout for their stocks, and some of them don't. Now, having that opportunity to do those cash values, you can either say yes or no. Now, I want you to think about that when you start looking for your next job because of those future benefits, do you pay off? Now, remember, we already talked about leveraging your job. And when you go to leverage your job, you're leveraging what they can pay for. Are they going to pay for your schooling? Are they going to pay for you to change that gap in your knowledge? I'm telling you, knowledge is one of the best things you could ever do. Um, I cannot, hands down, for those of you who are here, like hands down, knowledge in your job is one of the things that you can definitely transfer. How many of you have took advantage of your EAP, which is your employee's assistant program, where they will help you out with finding a therapist or they were allow you to help you out with your baby leave for those of you who have kids or have you ever took advantage of, you know, your vacation time? I want you to just kind of let me know in the audience. Have you ever taken uh, advantage of any of these opportunities? So while we got these opportunities going, I'm going to keep it, keep it tight here. I got like 13 minutes left, but I want to make sure I hit these points to drive home on what we want to talk about here, which is now we're looking at the long-term career development. Okay. The long-term career development, uh, they say here, a job is for today, but a career is for a lifetime. Pfft, already thought that. Already said that. Man, this book is, uh, I guess I already know all this knowledge here. It's great. Um, will you always enjoy the work you do today? That is a good question because I'm thinking about my current job. I'm like, yeah, I like the job. It's great. I really do like it. But can I see myself doing this long term? And that's one of the things that was what is considered long term. Some people say five years is about the standard range to say the job. Uh, some of you like to switch jobs every two years. If you're out there in the commercial world, commercial world, changing every two years makes sense. If you're in a government track, you can change a job every year and get a pay raise. So, you know, it really depends on what you really see yourself doing. So talking about training opportunities, this is again, taking it, leveraging your job. Uh, many technical, I mean, technology work situations did not exist a few years ago. Many of the job skills you will need in, uh, in the future have yet to be created. Your desire for increased education is a primary uh, determinant. Ugh. Sorry, you guys. All right, let's redo that. Your desire for increased education is a primary deter determinant in your career success and financial investment. Continue to learn about the new technology and global economy. So we already talked about how the jobs are going digital and how a lot of people are being left behind because they're not do willing to learn these new skills. There was something that I recently saw and they were talking about how, well, back in my day, the father used to only have to go to work and the mother get to stay home and they can't do that anymore. Well, well duh, the jobs have changed. So either you going to change with it or get left behind. And I think a lot of people are being left behind because they are unwilling to change. And then they sit there and complain. I do not want any of you who are listening to my voice right now to complain about the jobs. I want you to advance and get the things that you need because we are about that well. And we are here to take it full advantage of everything. Like, think of how long it will take for you to start a business today to have the same benefits that your current job can offer you. 
it will take a long time. Because if you think about it, like your sick leave, when you're on your own business, you stop working, who's going to take care of everything else unless you hire your staff? And most of the businesses that are out there, most of them are small businesses. Most of them are under five employees. So you got to weigh that in cons- into consideration. So O'Neill says, agreed, adapt. I mean, uh, yeah, adapt and evolve. You have to. So let's bring it. Let's bring this thing. I think I'm um, down to like the last page here. I want to talk about some of these strategies that you can actually have in your repertoire. I'm going to say these out loud so you can have these for your later use. So you look at the, what are we doing at this table? This is talk about the career paths and advancement. Oh, one thing they do have here, and I really forgot to mention this, is that a mentor, everybody should have a mentor, career mentor. If I'm your mentor, I appreciate it. Just let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Leave a note in the comments inside these things. I do read them, and I will make sure either A, I create another video for them, if I get the same information, oh, I forgot I got, I can do these things. Can I do my heart thing? There we go. Um, so if you ever need anything, shoot a note in the comments. I will make sure I either do a video about it or talk about it later or reference a video I already done. Okay. Career paths and advancement. A mentor is an experienced employee who served as a teacher and counselor for a least experienced person in a career field. A relationship with a mentor can provide such benefits as professionalized training, access to influential people, and emotional support, oh, and emotional support during difficult times. Now, I have to say, when I started my career, I had several mentors at different stages. Like I try to get the old folks because I like to see why are they so disgruntled? Why are they still working there? And I asked them, I was like, why are you still here? If you're that upset with the job? Well, you know, I got to pay for my kids, my kids, my raggedy kids, my wife keep nagging me and I don't want to go home yet. Okay, sir. That was a learning experience for me. Cause I'm like, I, I like going home. I enjoy going home. That's where, I, that's where I go to work. It's like pay these bills. Um, but then you have the one mentor be like, you know what? I see potential. You need to take these classes. I highly recommend you take these classes. I highly recommend you um, sign up for this program. Or the job might have a program that you haven't thought of or even didn't even know existed. And or take advantage of these educational benefits. So for me, to you all, who actually have your jobs out there, and if you have student loans, you can actually talk to your employer about paying, I think up to $2,500 a year for your student loans, if you have them. And I think that's the max that they can do, and it's actually deductible for them as a business owner. So for helping you out with their business, I mean, with your stuff. Okay, so Neil says, talk to the old folks. They have lots of lessons to learn from, good and bad. Yeah, they, I'm not sure about you guys, but some of the old people that are there, they usually play that old thing of what just like, shut up, don't rock the boat, just listen, just learn from them. You know, you want to stay quiet, keep your head down. And I'd be like, they didn't hire me to keep my head down. They didn't hire me to just shut up and do the work. They hired me to advance what is currently going on. And I swear they did not hire you just to kind of do the same thing. And I want to make sure that you all have that understanding. All right. So I got five minutes down down left. Okay. So they talk about the different, they got four different stages which is the pre-entry and career exploration stage, the characteristics, 
You want to assess personal interests and set career goals. Second bullet, which is obtain necessary training, gain initial employment. And then these are the concerns of the people who are in the pre-entry stage, which is matching interests and abilities to employment. And then also dealing the shock of unfulfilled expectations. Now, some of you might have came across this when you first got your job, you started noticing like, hey, they, I'm doing something completely different than what they hired me for. That is normal and it's not in the job description. And this is where a lot of people get into the field of what they're doing. This is stage one. Stage two, which is talking about the establishment and professional growth stage. You want to gain an experience, uh, gain an experience, effectiveness, and respect of colleagues. Secondly, you want to concentrate in the area of specialization. Okay, for the concerns of this person, which is the development, I mean, developing career contract contacts, uh, your other issue is that you're avoiding over-involvement and career burnout. This is where a lot of the people that I talk to are in that second stage. Now, this third stage, which is talking about the investment and mid-career adjustment stage, you continue to obtain experience and knowledge to win promotions. Remember, we talked about creating your own job to get your own promotion. This is where it's at. You also seek new challenges and expanding responsibility. Boom, you made your own job. And this is exactly what I was talking to you guys about. But these are the concerns is finding continued satisfaction, because usually when you're at this stage, you already know the work. You already know how to do all the things with your eyes closed. You can run circles usually around your supervisor at this time frame. But do you find satisfaction in that? Also, this is another concern which is maintaining sensitivity toward colleagues and subordinates. This is where I was talking about as far as well, if you want to keep your job, you need to build the, your uh, soft skills. This is the reason why a lot of management and people who've been there forever do a horrible job <laughs> at uh, keeping their mouth shut or hope, holding in some of their, I guess you could say their feelings toward things instead of letting you explore. All right, so this is the last stage in the career side of the house, which is late career and pre-retirement stage. How many of you guys actually have people that should be retired that haven't retired yet? Because I've seen those people too. It was like, yeah, I'm out of here. I ain't doing jack. But they just sit around and collect the paycheck. That's it. Um, but let's see what they have in here. They say they make financial and personal plans for retirement, uh, assist in training successor. That is sometimes. Sometimes they help to train you. Sometimes they don't. They'd be like, you know what? Mm, you find your own way, but they will help if you need them as a resource. Now, this is their concern. Determining the extent of professional involvement after uh, retirement, and then also planning involvement in community activities. So these are the people that are late career and pre-retirement stages. And one of the things is that with them, they usually are afraid to retire. I talked to a couple people. They was like, hey, I'm close to retirement, but I don't know where to move to. I don't know where to go. And that's one of the reasons why they can stay, continue to stay working is because they haven't done a full career path uh, outline. They haven't took time out to figure out if they're going to move with their kids. Are they going to downsize their home? What are they going to do with their primary home? Are they going to sell it? Are they going to rent it? Do they want to deal with renters? Um, are the kids going to take over it? Are they going to take over that business if they own the business or if they're currently working uh, for a corporation? What are they going to do? And most of the people that are at that age, they came from that generation where work acknowledges who they are. And I'm here to tell you that work <laughs> does not determine who you are. It's just a means to an end 
And this is one of the things that I want to continue to give to you so that you can understand. And I will, do not want you to forget this, is that work is so much more. I mean, life is so much more than work. You don't need to work to live. You live to work. No, no, no. I think I said that wrong. By the way, y'all know what I mean. All right. So before I go, I want to leave this with you. And these are some of the tips that came through. Okay. Let's see. Before we go there, I want to see, answer these questions from O'Neill. It said it can be scary. It can be a scary feeling from working every day to working hardly or not at all. Keep in mind, uh, the mind can run wild. Uh, let's see. Allegory of a cave. That is so true. That is so true. Because one of the things about when we came to COVID, a lot of people had time to think and what to do with their lives. And they started thinking about how to, how are they going to contribute to society and what are they going to do with their lives? All right. So this is coming down to the last bit. Um, and I want to leave these tips with you, which is one, uh, create a career development plan. I want you to do this. This will help you map out your goals and steps you need to um, to to achieve them. It's plain and simple. Number two, network with others in your field. So talking to people who are doing the kind of work you're actually interested in and just give valuable insights because you never know, like you might be in that rut and just not thinking about it. And they can provide some insight on how you can leverage what you already know to do something else that's pretty cool. When I was working at the Geek Squad again, I was just wondering what is what are the different fields in IT that I can actually dive into. And so after my undergrad was complete, I immediately started my master's degree and completed that within a year and a half because I was able to uh, fine tune my skills and where I wanted to go. And I knew what jobs that I wanted to go after. And because I was able to do that, I was able to go ahead on and leverage my education and my network to complete everything in such a short period of time. So that's my story. And then the last thing that I have here is don't be afraid to make changes. Your career path always have to be linear. I mean, doesn't always have to be linear. If you find yourself in a job that is not a good fit, just don't be afraid to make the change. All right, everybody. Again, I just want to thank you all. If you want to go head on and you stuck around this long, please sign up for my annual newsletter. I mean, not annual, my monthly newsletter at aboutthatwallet.com forward slash newsletter so that we can continue to have these conversations offline. And I also want to share with you some more information of what's happening with me some tips and tricks for your finances. And, you know, I'm always open. If you get an email from me, you just want to reply back. I'm the one writing these things. So I do get them. So please uh, be nice. <laughs> all, all right, everybody. Uh, this was fun. Uh, hopefully y'all like these quizzes. Kind of start adding these quizzes again to the show and y'all have a good night. Thank you.